Trigonomic Equations 2. We're going to look at some general forms. Solve the equation cosine of theta equals 1 half between 0 and 2 pi. So let me show you what this looks like. Here is the cosine of 1 half, so we have 1 half and some y value, but it also shows up right here, and that's the cosine of 1 half and some, and some negative y value. Now at this point, we have pi over 3. And at this point, we have 5 pi over 3. So this is actually be two of our solutions. So this is actually be our solutions for this one, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Now it asks us to give the general formula for all of the solutions. And they want us to list eight of the solutions. So once again, I'm going to put my little, I'm going to put in my ordered pairs. And let's remember that this one is pi over 3, and that's this right here. So let's find another solution for this one. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way around. And so that's simply saying that theta this time, instead of theta being just the square root of 3, instead of theta being just the square, instead of theta being just pi over 3, we're going to have pi over 3 plus 2 theta, plus 2 pi. We can do it twice. So if we start here and we go around and another time, in this case theta would be pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi and so on. Now if we keep doing this, they ask us to find the general formula. Okay, so theta would be pi over 3 plus 2k pi. Now you're probably asking, well, what's k? k is the number of times we're going to do 2 pi. We're going to be making our circles. So when k is 0, it's simply going to be pi over 3, because 2 times 0 times pi is 0. When we have k is 1, it's going to be our first go around. So when k is 1, we're going to end up with so when k is 1, we end up with 7 pi over 3. When k is 2, we end up with 13 pi over 3. And we can even go backwards. And we can even go backwards. So let's do that. We're going to go like this. And that turns out when k is negative 1. So when we do that, we end up with negative 5 pi over 3. So we have 1, 2, 3, we have four solutions to this first ordered pair. Let's look at the second ordered pair. So here's this one, and we're down here, and that turns out to be 1 half, negative y, and we decided that for this one it's 5 pi over 3. Okay, so let's start writing some of this stuff. Our original theta is 5 pi over 3. So the second time we did it, just like we had talked about for pi over 3, we'll have 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, and pi equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, and so on. So hopefully you can see the general formula for this one we would have 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. And k depends on how many 2 pi's we have in there. So here's our original. If we do just 2 pi, that means k is 1. We end up with 11 pi over 3. I think I can fit this one in here. If we do it twice, where k is 2, we end up with 17 pi over 3, and so on. So we have one, two, three, oh, we need one more to get our eight. So let's just put in five pi over three plus two. And let's say we go backwards where it's negative one. And that one turns out to be negative pi over three. So we just figured out our general formulas and we listed eight solutions. So let's solve the equation cosine of 2 theta equals negative 1 half. The first thing that we need to remember is that the cosine 
of theta equals negative one-half. And for that to be true, it would be at two pi over three and four pi over three. Now to figure out the cosine of two theta, I need to put these into their general form. So that would be theta equals two pi over three plus two k pi. And then the other one would be theta equals four pi over three plus two k pi. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, two theta equals this, which is two pi over three plus two k pi. We want theta by itself, so we're gonna divide every part by two. So it turns out that theta equals pi over three plus k pi. And so this is gonna be the general form, well the first general form for the cosine of two theta. Now let's figure out this second one. So we have two theta equals four pi over three plus two k pi. Once again, we divide every part by two, and it turns out that theta for this one equals two pi over three plus k pi. So let's do when k equals zero. Well, that's the easiest because that's just gonna be pi over three. Now let's do when k equals one. We'll have pi over three plus pi, but we need a common denominator, so we'll call it three pi over three, which is four pi over three. And let's do k equals zero for this one, which would just give us two pi over three. And then let's do k equals one. So we'll have two pi over three plus three pi over three. And that gives us five pi over three, and I think you get the idea. So you can do k equals two, k equals three, and so on. But, so here, so here are the general forms, and here's a couple of our solutions. Let's look at the tangent of theta over two, and that equals negative one. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that the tangent of theta equals negative one. And the only time that this happens is when theta equals three pi over four. Now remember that tangent has a period of pi. We're gonna have pi over two equals three pi over four. We're gonna multiply both sides by two because I wanna know what theta is by itself. So it turns out that theta is six pi over four, and we want to simplify that, so it turns out that that's three pi over two. So to figure out our general formula, let's put it over here, theta will equal three pi over two plus two k pi. Now you're probably saying, well Catherine, you just said that the tangent uh, the, the period for tangent is theta. Well, it's actually not this tangent. This tangent is pi. So when we did this, we could also say that this is the same. Let me put it down here. Theta over two equals three pi over four plus k times pi. Because this, this part here is the general form for this guy, okay? So now when I multiply everything by two, you'll notice I get the 2k pi. So let's figure out three solutions for this one. Well, we have three pi over two when k is zero, seven pi over two when k is one, and 11 pi over two when k is two. I would like you to try this one, so press pause, solve it, and play to check your solution. Well, let's solve this one. We know that the sine of theta when it's square root of two over two is when theta equals pi over four, that's the first quadrant, and three pi over four, which is the second quadrant. Now we don't have to do any figuring here, so let's just do the general form. 
we're going to have theta equals pi over 4 plus 2k pi for this guy. And in this one, theta equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2k pi. Because remember, the period is 2 pi. So when k is 0, we simply have pi over 4. And so here are our six solutions. And thanks for watching.